So let's look at the uh, the pickup set here. In your box, you're going to get a catalog. It shows all our pickups, or most of them that we list. Underneath, there's a piece of foam there to, to keep the uh, pickups from getting knocked around during shipping and, and scratching them up. Your pickups are going to say my name, the year it was made, the model of the pickup, and the position the pickup was made for. That was a bridge. This one's a middle. So, as long as they're made after like 2003 or 2002 or so, it's going to say all that information on it. Before that, I was pretty haphazard about how I marked them. Here's the part most people miss. You look underneath the bottom foam, and you got your screws and your springs, and you got a little uh, gift pick. You got a couple of stickers. You can do whatever you want with that. And more importantly, you got a set of schematics. And the warranty information and some real basic installation notes. But there's your Stratocaster uh, wiring in case you're wiring one from scratch. Uh, and a Telecaster wiring setup in case you're wiring one from scratch. Otherwise, you really don't need that. You can just follow what you had. But um, one thing I want to mention is I do not recommend putting on a, uh, a capacitor on the volume pot that retain, is intended to retain the treble as you roll the volume down. Uh, it just makes it sound unnatural. And if you have a good cable and a good set of pickups, you're not going to lose treble when you roll the volume down. When you do put that on, it can also affect the tone when the volume is all the way up on 10. Even though it's not in the circuit, it can bleed uh, treble in and bleed off, off bass. So it can make your pickup set and your whole guitar sound really funny if you use a treble bypass capacitor. So don't use that. First thing I'm going to do is reinstall the new set of pickups. If you're really swift and you have an ohm meter, you might want to check your pickups before you even install them. Especially important when you do a guitar like a 335, you don't want to you want to know that your pickup is good for sure when you install it in case there is some other problem. You don't want to have to troubleshoot lose the pickup good. It's very rare that you're going to get a bad pickup, but it's worth testing. So I'm going to set one pickup in at a time. I like to use springs because it gives you a little bit of microphonics compared to uh, surgical tubing. And I like having a little bit of microphonic in it. It's somewhat adjustable by how much tension you put on the springs too. You get a little more microphonics by either clipping the spring a little bit shorter so the pickup it sits a little bit looser or tightening the pickup a little bit more, raising the action. See how easy that is? Once again, you just put the pickup through, put the spring on it. Can you all see that okay? These pickups are already tapped for the screws. A lot of uh, a lot of pickups, they give you a, a, a screw that has a little uh, self-tapping part on the end, 
and the pickups aren't actually tapped. These are actually tapped for a 632 screw and it makes it easier to install it. It goes on straight and you don't have to worry about um, harming the pickup. As long as you don't cross thread the screw, you, when you do thread that screw into the pickup, just make sure it's going in real smooth. You know, I might notice that the the special bridge has got about a quarter inch gap almost in between the pickup cover and the uh, the bottom of the pickup there. That's because it's a specially made uh, bridge pickup with a taller magnet than usual. So it, it may be a little bit more difficult to get the screw to thread in. But just be uh, patient with it and turn it a few times. It'll it'll find its place because it's already tapped. There we go. So, we got to that point. That's easy. Now we're going to retape these like they were in the beginning. So, what I do is I take the bridge pickup and move that wire over uh, straight like that. I'm going to put a piece of tape on these two here. I just use masking tape. Uh, Normally, if this was an old 50s or 60s guitar, I would use the, your regular looking masking tape, that brown stuff, just to make it look vintage. So I'm going to tape those together. So, again, I'm just making sure that the wires are just running straight down the middle there. Okay, now I'm going to bend all these here right at that pickup, right in the middle again. And I'm going to put a piece of tape right there. This will hold the wires in one position so when you do put the pickguard back in, they're following right down the middle of the route and they're not getting pushed over and being trapped either between the pickguard and the body or, or the uh, getting trapped in the uh, pickup route. Just good, good clean wiring. Now I'm going to separate out the black. Now uh, one thing I'd like to mention is our uh, warranty exchange policy. Uh, if you have any doubt, for any reason you might want to exchange these pickups, don't cut these lead wires and just roll them up like this to get them out of the way and then solder them. I'm really confident. I'm going to cut those so that they're just right even with that pot. Now this is called pushback wire. The reason it's called pushback wire is because you don't have to strip the insulation off, you just push it back. Isn't that wonderful? All the wire we use is, is pre-tinned, that means it's coated with solder already. Okay, I'm going to set those right down like that. I'm wiping the tip of my soldering iron on a wet sponge so that it's nice and clean. I'm using uh, 6040 uh, Kester solder, it's called number 44 solder, and uh, the diameter of it is um, 0 0.040. It's pretty small solder, and it's just the right size for doing all guitar electronics. Now, notice, see this little, see this little knob right in the middle of that uh, volume pot? You don't want to get solder on that because that's that's what turns when you turn the uh, uh, pot. So you've got to be really careful here. 